they are already among us. Extraterrestrial life scattered throughout the US. They are in other countries too. The existence of about 400 of these space creatures is known thus far. They are the moon trees. They actually hit our planet from a satellite, specifically from lunar orbit. Truth be told, some ordinary tree seeds ended up on board the Apollo 14 back in 1971. Astronaut Stuart Rusa took them with him. After the mission return, the seeds germinated and were planted in multiple different US states. A few were also sent to Brazil, Switzerland, and Japan. And although there are moon trees in only a few states, the moon itself is visible in every country. This space body is the closest to us, so it has been studied more than the others. There were even some people on its surface. However, it is still unknown how and where the moon was formed. In this regard, scientists have several theories, but none of them fully explains all the mysteries behind the moon. And there are many theories out there. Our satellite is, in many respects, unique when compared to the other objects in our solar system. There are four terrestrial planets in it, Mercury, Venus, the Earth itself, and Mars. The first two satellites don't exist at all. Phobos and Deimos revolve around Mars, but compared to the moon, they look more like small boulders. Phobos is 158 times smaller than the Earth's satellite, and Deimos is even smaller than that. Sure, there are satellites much larger than the moon in our solar system, but they formed near the gas giants, which is a completely different group of planets and therefore have their own rules there. Due to its large size, the moon has had a strong impact on the Earth. Perhaps it was the moon specifically that contributed to the emergence of life. Most planets like ours wobble around quite a lot in their orbit. Because of this, the climate on them is extremely unpredictable. The moon has also helped to stabilize the position of the Earth's poles in space, which, in turn, has guaranteed fairly stable climactic conditions. Some scientists believe that without lunar gravity, life on our planet could not have appeared. The moon's unique characteristics have contributed to the emergence of one of the existing theories regarding its origin, the theory of capture. It's assumed that the terrestrial satellite formed elsewhere, perhaps within the orbit of Venus, or even outside the solar system. It wandered freely through space, but then, when it flew past the Earth, it was captured by its gravitational force. Hence the name of the theory. But this theory definitely has some holes in it. First off, following the capture of the Moon, the gravity of our planet would have had to change. Over time, its power would no longer be sufficient enough to hold the satellite, and it would be set free again. Second, the geochemical parameters of the Earth and the Moon are already very similar. This may indicate that both cosmic bodies were formed at about the same time and in the same place. All by cosmic standards, of course. Many planets acquired their satellites by the capture method. For example, it's believed that the aforementioned Phobos and Deimos were asteroids that fell into the gravitational trap of Mars. However, this theory is unlikely to apply to the Earth and our Moon. Among other things, the capture theory only explains how the Moon ended up in Earth's orbit, but says nothing about the secret of its origin. The same cannot be said about the fission theory put forward in the 1800s. This version was proposed by Charles Darwin's son, George. The idea is essentially that the Moon is a piece that has broken away from the Earth. At the beginning of its formation, the planet rotated so fast that a huge mass of molten material was hurled into space but it remained in orbit due to gravity and subsequently became the Moon. Proponents of this theory say that matter could have been torn from the place where the Pacific Ocean is now, which is not a wholly unreasonable assumption. While admiring a full Moon, have you ever noticed the dark spots on its surface? Parts of the Moon that are pale gray in color are a type of rock called anorthosite, and the darker ones are basalt. Both kinds can also be found on Earth the first one on the island of Rum in Scotland. As for basalt, most of the ocean floor consists of it, which is why the division theory seems plausible, but only at first glance. The thing is, the Earth couldn't spin fast enough to throw a huge piece of rock into space. Also, data from the analysis done on lunar rocks do not exactly speak in favor of this hypothesis. These rocks are much older than those that are present at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean. On top of that, Basalt is the most common rock found on other terrestrial planets. Nevertheless, the fission theory still has a right to exist, thanks in part to a study conducted in 2010. 
The latter shows that, under certain conditions, a natural nuclear explosion could have occurred on Earth in its early days. Its resulting force would have been enough to throw a large amount of matter into orbit, sufficient to form the Moon. There are several more theories concerning the origin of the Earth's satellite, but these don't matter because the Moon is actually an artificial structure made by aliens. What's more, we even know that there is a cosmic base on its dark side. Okay, this view is just one shared by conspiracy theory fans. But let's get back to scientific hypotheses now. Some of them suggest that both the Earth and the Moon were formed in parallel, but still independently of each other. For example, they could have orbited the nascent Sun approximately 4.5 billion years ago, and the Moon formed from cosmic gas and dust near our planet. This would explain the isotopic similarity between the two. But this is the only thing that really keeps this particular theory alive. From a scientific point of view, it actually raises more questions and disagreements. It's not even clear why, in this case, the Moon suddenly began to revolve around the Earth. Also of great importance is the difference in the density of our planet and its satellite, as well as differences in the overall structures of their respective nuclei. In the center of the Moon, like the Earth, there is a red-hot iron core. But compared to the Earth, the lunar core is much smaller in percentage terms. That, and it's not located exactly in the center, but slightly offset. Although its temperature is high, it's not nearly enough to warm the surface of the satellite and kick off any geological processes. In other words, the formation process of these two cosmic bodies would not have been absolutely identical. The hypothesis stating that the formation of the Earth's satellite came from the fragments of planetesimals is also considered untenable. These are a kind of cosmic building blocks that existed in the solar system back during its formation, which then collided and stuck together to form planets. So how then did the Moon come about? Now most scientists support one particular theory. It has been indirectly confirmed by analysis of some lunar soil, which was delivered to Earth by past missions under the Apollo program. Scientists there had at their disposal quite a lot of rock samples, almost 900 pounds, 400 kilograms. Analyses show that our planet and its satellite are strikingly similar on a chemical and isotopic level, but still substantially different. If the Moon had formed far from the Earth, this difference would have been even larger. And vice versa, if it was formed at the same time and in the same place with the planet, the similarity would be almost exact. So what can we really say about the assumption that the Moon is a piece of the Earth from way back when? Although there is some truth in this though. In any case, according to the main theory concerning the satellite's origin, the Moon is indeed part of a planet, and not only ours, but rather the so-called Theia. In Greek mythology, this is the same name held by the mother of the moon goddess, Selene. When the Earth was still in the process of its formation, another planet the size of Mars crashed into it. Scientists came to call her Theia. But instead of shattering like in the movies, the two cosmic bodies melted. Over time, almost all of the resulting mass merged together, with the exception of a fairly large piece, from which the moon appeared. This theory is the best fit so far in many respects. But even here, one very important question remains open. Why are the Moon and the Earth chemically identical then? First off, our planet and Theia were born in different parts of space and differed in composition. Second, although they merged into one planet, they were not mixed in some random blender, so an identical chemical cocktail would not be obtained just like that. Scientists offer several different answers to this question. One researcher has stated that Thea could have evenly dissolved in the mass of proto-Earth, without leaving a clear trace. This is possible if their compositions were initially similar, which is quite realistic if both bodies had formed in approximately the same area of space. It's also believed that Thea could be made of ice. Due to the collision, part of the matter was torn off the Earth to form the Moon, while Thea itself actually evaporated. Scientists have simulated multiple scenarios to figure out the exact size of Thea its composition, and the angle of its impact with the Earth. But none of these fit perfectly. However, yet another study was conducted in 2017. This one suggests that there was more than one collision. Several objects ranging in size from the Moon to Mars could have successfully crashed into our planet. So what does that change? First, from the fragments of these cosmic bodies around the Earth, rings would form, much like those of Saturn. 
and then several small satellites would have formed from these. But the only one left is the one we know now. Second, such multiple impacts would explain the similarity of chemical composition between the Earth and the Moon. The collisions would contribute, so to speak, to the mixing of matter, and parts of the destroyed space objects would have been evenly dissolved in the proto-Earth. But even this theory remains only that, a theory. We still don't know exactly how the Moon came into being. Moreover, scientists even argue about its age. Some say that the satellite was formed about 100 million years later than the solar system. Others argue that this figure must be at least doubled. Back in 2017, a group of scientists stated that they had accurately established the age of the Moon, setting it 4,510,000,000 years. They studied zircon crystals from rock samples brought back by the Apollo mission. This is indeed one of the most accurate ways to determine the age of something ancient on the Earth but there is concern that this method may not work so well with extraterrestrial samples. The moon certainly has its secrets. Think, while you watch this video, it suddenly disappears. It turns out that our satellite steals some of the energy from the Earth's rotation. This allows it to gradually move further and further away from our planet. In the future, the moon will be able to free itself from this gravitational grip. But this won't happen super soon, at least by human standards. Every year, the Moon moves about 1.5 inches, a little less than 4 centimeters, away. If you look at the situation on a cosmic scale, then it all really seems small. When the satellite was just being formed, it was less than 14 miles, only 22.5 kilometers, from the Earth. Now the distance is 385,000 kilometers, over 239,000 miles. But don't worry, the Earth won't be left without a satellite. It has another one. Kruthna. The latter was first discovered back in 1986. Sounds astounding, but it is in fact an asteroid about 3 miles or 5 kilometers wide. It revolves around the Sun, simultaneously crossing the orbits of the following three planets, Venus, Earth, and Mars. At the same time, it spends a lot of time near our planet, making a full circle in its orbit over 364 Earth days, which is why it is considered its quasi-satellite. And yet, it definitely cannot fully replace the Moon.